If you're designing or installing tall cabinets, but are maybe a little intimidated by potential ceiling clearance issues, stick around. In this video, we're going to look at methods for calculating maximum cabinet heights, as well as some alternative staging and assembly methods that may help avoid these conflicts altogether. All this and more, right now, here on Shop Tales and Lore. If you're a serious do-it-yourselfer or home workshop enthusiast looking for a variety of helpful content in one place, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified whenever we release a new video. And if we've helped you today, please take a moment to like, share, and comment below. It helps these videos reach more folks and your comments help others as well. Thanks again. So, why are tall cabinets often a problem on installation day? Well, apart from the advanced planning needed to make sure the unit will fit through the doors, hallways, and stairwells that have to be navigated to get it into place, one common challenge is too little floor-to-ceiling height to stand the cabinet up. To visualize how this can happen, let's take a look at a simple example. Here's a tall cabinet in a room with an 8-foot ceiling represented by this line. The cabinet dimensions are fairly typical at 20 inches wide by 24 inches deep by 95 inches tall. Since the cabinet is an inch shorter than the available space, it should fit fine, right? To find out, let's start by laying the cabinet on its side to simulate how we would typically carry it into the room. Now as we raise it into place, watch what happens. As we zoom in for a closer look, it's obvious that this corner will hit the ceiling preventing us from standing the cabinet fully upright. But if our cabinet is a full inch under the ceiling height, what causes this? The answer has to do with the diagonal dimensions of our cabinet box. Since this point here was resting on the floor as we tried to pivot the cabinet upward, and this point was hitting the ceiling, it's the distance between the two that really matters. When we measure that distance, it turns out to be over an inch longer than the ceiling height. We would never be able to stand this cabinet up in a space with a 96 inch ceiling. Using a little basic geometry, we can quickly find out just how tall a cabinet will fit in this space. The Pythagorean theorem says that the sum of the squared lengths of the legs in a right triangle equals the squared length of the hypotenuse. Since, in our case, we already know that C corresponds with the ceiling height and A with the cabinet width, we want to solve for B to get the maximum cabinet height possible. If C is 96 inches, or the height of our ceiling, and we know that A equals our cabinet width of 20 inches, then by plugging in these values and working through the equation, we see that a cabinet about 93 and 7 eighths inches tall should be able to stand up in this space. Let's try out that theory. This cabinet is exactly the same except that it's been reduced to a height of 93 and 7 eighths. We'll delete these dimension markings for clarity and see if the cabinet will stand up from horizontal. So old Pythagoras was right. A cabinet with a height of 93 and 7 eighths inches will stand up under an 8-foot ceiling. But remember, that's in a perfect world where the floor-to-ceiling clearance is uniform throughout the room and there's no built-up drywall compound or other irregularities in the ceiling surface. If you're faced with a situation like this, it may be best to build in a little extra margin for these variables and make the cabinet slightly shorter. Here's another solution that works great in very small spaces where it may not be possible to pivot the cabinet up from a horizontal position. Build a separate base and then shorten the cabinet by the height of the base. This way the cabinet can be lifted straight up and slid onto the base taking the long diagonal dimension out of play altogether. Refrigerator enclosures are a different breed of cat because they have to be tall and the cabinet over the appliance must be wide, typically somewhere around 36 inches. This example includes a wall on the left end to help illustrate the method, but this approach would work even without an end wall. 
Notice that this fridge topper cabinet has been attached to one support panel, but the second or right hand panel is left off for the time being. Also note that the panel is 95 and 3 quarter inches long, or just 1 quarter inch under the ceiling. Now there's no practical reason to take a cabinet this close to a ceiling. In fact, it might even make it difficult to fit crown or other moldings at the top of the cabinet. But this is a great way to see just how close you can come with this method without touching the ceiling. Pivoting the assembly at the end of the panel, let's raise everything into position. Now let's back off just a couple degrees and take a closer look at what's happening up top. If this were a conventional cabinet as wide at the base as it is at the top, it would have crashed into the ceiling long before this point. But here we see that it misses the ceiling entirely. Why? It's because the only diagonal in play is literally measured across the edge of the tall panel. It's possible to stand that 95 and 3 quarter inch panel up in this space, and since the cabinet just follows the same path as the panel, it slips easily into place. All that's necessary at this stage is to temporarily support the cabinet with a 2x or cabinet jack and attach the right hand support panel. When I described this approach to a remodeling contractor a few years ago, he said there was no way it could work. If he had been willing to bet, I could have picked up some easy money that day. Hey, thanks for watching. Here are a couple of other videos you might find interesting. Be sure to check out our homepage for more content on a wide variety of DIY and home workshop topics.